it's been amazing to have access to doctors, the surgeries, the stay in the hospital, physical therapy. It's all affordable for me here in Taiwan. I'm really grateful for that. If I was in, I only remember waking up in the hospital, seeing my dad and some friends and thinking what happened. It took a while before they were able to explain what had happened. They were a little bit careful to tell me the 100% truth. I was in the hospital in a drug-induced coma for over a month. And then I was in the, the ICU for another month after that. They did a lot to save my life. I had shattered my foot, femur was broken in five places. I crushed six of my vertebrae. I tore the aortic valve on my heart and had internal bleeding on all sorts of organs in my body. And that required a whole series of surgeries, titanium rods in my legs, spinal fusion on those six vertebrae, open heart surgery to replace my valve with a bovine valve. The whole time I'm on a ventilator, feeding tube. At one point I was on an ECMO machine, which 24 hours a day takes the blood out of your body and oxygenates it, puts it back in your body. It's extreme. And the whole time I'm in my head thinking, what happened to me? I spent eight months in the hospital and a lot happened. It was quite the experience and journey. This isn't something I wish happened. And I would like to use whatever I have available to me to tell prevent this from happening from anybody else to anybody else. I hope that something like this, this talking about it can help. I attempted to commit suicide and I lived, you know, leading up to this. I started off dealing with just a medium level of stress. I had a full-time job, but because of the pandemic lockdowns here, the company was nosediving and the writing was on the wall. Everybody was being laid off. So that definitely brought up a lot of anxiety in me about what would I be doing next? And I had decided to go to Bali, try to live this kind of like digital nomad life. I don't think that I realized how much that alone would untether me. Being in Bali, not really sure why, why, why am I there? I do remember I didn't sleep for about three days and that's when I knew there was a problem and I felt a sense of emergency. I felt like I was losing my mind. I asked to go to the doctor and the doctor gave me some medicine. After that, I don't remember anything. I don't remember being back in Taiwan. I don't remember making the decision to, you know, jump off a building, which is what I did. And so I feel like another person took control of my body and did this to me. Like mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm the real me and this has happened to me. And that other person, that wasn't really me, which is a really strange experience. Like, wow, I did that. You know, I, I jumped off the roof. I tried to kill myself. I came really close to dying. In fact, in the hospital, you know, I flatlined a number of times. Technically, I died. Unfortunately, I didn't have any near-death experiences. Like, I didn't see a tunnel or go up to heaven, which I feel kind of ripped off by that too. Like, I came so close to it. Like, I wish I would have had some of these amazing near-death experiences. Now that you mention that, I'm very curious, like, how have your thoughts on death changed? I'm much more curious. I think a lot about death. I feel much less afraid of it. That's going to be an interesting experience. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be like a nothing. Like, some people believe it's just it's going to be blackness and the lights are turned off. In a way, like, if you did end up dying at that point, that's kind of what happened. You mm -hmm. just blacked out and then that was yep. that. One other thing I've also been curious about, you made the choice to stay here instead of going home. The biggest reason is because I have insurance here in Taiwan. I'm a permanent resident. I've been in Taiwan for 13 years. I have the privilege of having the national health care in Taiwan, which is really good, really affordable and it's high quality. In my situation as it is now, that's something I really need. It's been amazing to have access to doctors, the surgeries, the stay in the hospital, physical therapy. It's all affordable for me here in Taiwan. I'm really grateful for that. If I was in the States where I'm from, it would be a nightmare, a financial nightmare. It would bankrupt me, my family. And if I was to go back to the States now, I wouldn't 
I'd be able to afford insurance. Like I, I do physical therapy, occupational therapy here. I'd never be able to afford that there. So being in Taiwan is yeah, really important for me as I continue to heal and recover. The other reason that it's probably a good place for me right now is because it is my home. I've lived in Taiwan for 13 years. Taiwan is my home. It feels like my home. It is my home. This is where my friends are. This is where my community, my family is. I'm not Taiwanese officially, but I feel like I'm Taiwanese in some ways because I've been here for so long and, and I love Taiwan and I love living here. I've been really grateful that I've had such an amazing experience being here. So as I continue to recover and heal, this is just like a really supportive place for me to be. Have you ever thought about like how much this would cost if it happened in the States? Millions. Millions of dollars. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, but I, I want to say millions yeah. only because it seems like everything costs millions in the States now, right? You know, if you want a yeah. house, it's millions. If I had a heart surgery, a back surgery, a, a femur surgery, a foot surgery, head surgery, I had plastic surgery on different parts of my body, stay in the, the ICU for over a month, the hospital eight months, I can't imagine. It would easily be tens, a million tens dollars. Tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. I mean, I can't even fathom what the actual cost would be because all I know is that I have friends that have comparatively minor mm. medical needs mm. and it's crazy how much it costs. Mm. The, the numbers are just mind blowing. So I wouldn't have had the options that I have here. Here I was able to have a full-time caregiver which was out of our pocket but it was possible because the health insurance covered so much of my medical expenses, I could still afford to get the, the care I needed in the States that would have been totally impossible. As a permanent resident, you were paying into the system for all of these mm -hmm. years. You're in entitled to that. Yeah, I, I think I would definitely like it to be possible for me to receive other benefits like disability benefits. It's impossible for me to work right now. It's very difficult for me to be fully independent, to go out, get all the food that I need. I rely on a lot of support from other people. So it would be nice if some of the disability benefits available to Taiwanese were available to me. That could help me a lot, but I'm happy that there's potential for that in the future. I'm grateful that I'm a permanent resident and I can stay here. A lot of my friends see me as somebody who's full of life and loving life. And, you know, I read a lot of philosophy and I've got some great perspectives and I want to help people. And now here I am trying to kill myself. I've experienced a lot of shame, guilt, even though it's something I technically decided to do, I feel ashamed. You know, I'm going to continue to share what I'm going through, my journey on my own Instagram, because there's a lot for me to process still. There's a lot to talk about. I was able to meet these doctors, have interactions that felt profound with other people. I was able to witness other people's pain and suffering, and that's taught me a lot about suffering. And maybe I need those lessons to do this, to share it with other people and hopefully help other people. I still have a lot to be grateful for. I am alive. I do have my voice. I can talk about these things. But the truth is, is that I felt really depressed and I felt really like hopeless in life. And that means that other people are out there that feel the same way and questioning themselves. There's other people that are into yoga, wellness, health, eating all the right food, doing all the right things, doing all the right affirmations, having success, having money, having looks, and they still feel bad about who they are and they still feel bad about their lives and they might still be thinking about killing themselves. And I don't know exactly how to solve that, but I hope that I could be a part of it. There's something, there's some benefit to this. There's something here and that gives me hope, the feeling that I wanna have when I wake up, which means it's still possible. You know, it's still possible for somebody like me, even though I'm going through a lot of pain and I wake up some days just feeling like ripped off in life, but it's still possible. Mm. There's still possibility. There's still hope. If you want to become the next 爆红创作者。请打开下方资讯栏链接，一起来投稿吧。